Welcome to Hiking 101, the final chapter, some miscellaneous, miscellaneous items that I'd like to talk about. Uh, if you've gotten this far, congratulations, man. This is a, this is a quite an intense series, so uh, I hope what I've said in the previous chapters has really helped you or get, have given you a little more options and broaden your perspective as to what's out there, and hopefully you're going to have a lighter pack weight, what's within your budget. Okay, so let's talk about some miscellaneous items. Here I have a pack cover. I forgot to mention this during the uh, backpacking series, so we're going to discuss it now. What, is, what this is, is a cover that goes over your backpack when it's raining. This helps keep a lot of the rain out of your pack. This particular design, which is the most prevalent design out there, only protects from the pack out. It doesn't protect between your back and the backpack and your shoulder straps. There is another item out there that's a cottage industry called the Packa, which incorporates your entire body and covers over the pack. Uh, I'm going to put a link on my web on the uh, uh, description area of this video. Something you might want to consider. A little heavier than this. Uh, this is Cuban fiber. There's still nylon and, and other versions out there a little heavier. Uh, the pack, I believe, is still nylon. Uh, that runs about 13 ounces, where this runs uh, less than an ounce. But the pack actually acts as a rain jacket and a pack cover. So, something to consider. Uh, things to keep items dry inside your pack. Uh, a lot of items usually come with their own stuff sack that's water resistant, but it's not actually waterproof. So you could probably consider what's called a dry bag, which is a waterproof bag that you place items in. It usually has a roll top enclosure to be completely waterproof. Clips in, throw it in your, in your pack. You could also use what's called a pack liner, which basically is just a, a trash compactor bag. Do you place the line the inside of your bag and place your items in it and then roll the bag closed. So, or you can do a combination of uh, a, a trash compactor bag and uh, dry bags. I mean, it's up to you. It's just uh, ways to keep the items in your pack dry in inclement weather. <clears throat> getting a little hoarse. I guess I'm getting a little sick too. Uh, a knife. This is basically all you really need. When I first started backpacking, I had this huge Rambo knife, bring it with me, it weighed like, I don't know, a pound and a half. It's not necessary, because you know what I did most of the time when I was backpacking and hiking? I used this to open up uh, my freeze-dried and dehydrated food. And maybe use this to shave off some uh, shavings of wood to get a uh, fire going. So you don't really need much. A simple pocket knife will do. Uh, some ultra light hikers go as far as just bringing a, uh, a, a razor blade. Uh, I don't think I want to go that light. I want something that actually feels like a knife. So maybe if I do have to do some sort of self-defense situation, I have this to uh, act as a self-defense along with uh, maybe a hiking pole and whatever other objects that are around. Uh, map and compass. I'm not going to go into how, you sh how to use a map and a compass. There's other resources out there. But, uh, and pardon me, I'm not going to be politically correct. Don't be a freaking retard and show up to a particular area you're not uh, familiar with and not have a map and a compass because you are going to get lost and then search and rescue is going to find your ass either cold, hungry, and tired, or dead. So, don't be a retard. <laughs> a little tip for me to you. Uh, way to communicate. Bring your cell phone. Put it in a plastic bag. Whatever. Uh, if most trails will have some sort of a signal, not all, but most. So if you are lost, uh, you have a way to communicate to have somebody find you. Fire kit. Let's spend a little bit of time on this. You really want to go into the woods with the ability to make fire. Uh, one, it's a morale booster if you're lost. If you can make fire, at least you've accomplished something. And you have a way to keep you warm at night. Uh, a few options you can do. This is dryer lint. I suggest putting it in, so, in some sort of a freezer bag. Uh, dryer lint goes up relatively quickly, uh, but if you use a cheap little plastic Ziploc bag, which I used on my last uh, trip, 
and I fell into a lake because uh, that's what I do. <laughs> I tend to fall into bodies of water, hence my trail name as Water Monkey. Uh, when I fell in, the bag had a little bit of a hole in it. Water got in and it soaked dry lid. So when dry lid gets wet, it's useless. And it's useless for like five days. I mean, I tried to uh, dry this out on a rock when it was a nice, warm, hot, sunny day. And I tell you what, it didn't really work. So you really want to protect your dry lid if that's going to be your major source of stirring fires. Uh, another source would be what's called char cloth, which is cotton that's placed in a container poke a hole in it and you throw this into the fire, what happens is uh, the fire uh, creates an environment inside that's relatively hot, it chars the fabric, and when you strike this fabric with uh, a, ferros a ferrocene rod, uh, it's going to create an ember, and you can use that ember to put on dry tinder, blow into it, and you can create a fire that way. So this would be the easiest, this would be moderately easy if you have dry tinder, relative, uh, mostly uh, floral debris. Uh, the next easiest way would be using a magnesium rod and what you do is you shave the magnesium strips onto a piece of tinder, strike it with your fire starter and uh, if you're lucky the spark will hit the pile and then it will cause uh, uh, a, little, a mini fire which will then hopefully ignite the rest of your tinder. This would be probably the most difficult to use as uh, not including a bow drill or a hand drill which would be the toughest thing to do. Um, mainly because if it's windy your pile is going to blow away. If you strike it, uh, your fire striker too hard and you strike and you hit the actual pile it's going to scatter. Uh, this is probably a pain in the ass. I would use this as a last resort. Uh, I've actually went as far ahead as creating a, a tinder pile and using just this to start the fire. I would try to go this route first before you even go with magnesium rod because magnesium rod does take quite a bit of effort, uh, less effort than trying to strike repeatedly on uh, dry tinder. So, always have a way to make fire. I tend to take two or three methods. I would usually take the dryer lint, magnesium rod, char cloth, and the uh, fluorescing rod. Now, the reason why I use this as opposed to a lighter, and you can use a lighter and cut out the middleman. Uh, if a lighter gets wet, it becomes basically useless for a while. If this gets wet, you can, you can still use it. So, I mean, you could dump this in water and still strike it and still make sparks. So that's the reason why I would use this. It's not much of a weight penalty at all, so that's basically what I do.